Hey guys, Darren back again. It's been a while, but um, I'm back. I'm making videos again. Um, so here we go. This one I'm playing with today is an old Sega Mark III. And I've, I've already pulled it apart. So what's happening with this guy is the old power switch is broken. So the console does work. However, um, these sort of rocker switches, they typically break and need replacing. So that's exactly what we're gonna go ahead and do today. We're gonna to replace the switch and I'll show you where I got the switch, show you how to do it, and we'll make sure it all works. So first things first, I'm just gonna plug a game in. Um, I'll zoom you in down to the switch area, just so you can have a look. Um, and you can see that the there's just two kind of pins, like two contacts that stick out. And as you push the rocker switch, they just touch together. Now I've got a bit of broken plastic in here. So that sort of plastic, you know, kind of locks the switch into the on position. And that's how it typically worked. But, you know, we're gonna have to replace it because there's no easy way to repair that. So um, I'll just, test it, make sure it does work, which I believe it does. Yep. Okay, so... Let's pull this guy back apart. Um, the control pads are cool with these, aren't they? They're pretty nice. Really old school, first generation sort of Seeker stuff. This one does have a crack or a piece missing, which is unfortunate, but it still operates. So we'll pull it apart. Um, I've already gone ahead and unscrewed the whole thing really. So, you know, you'll see that I've got the parts laid out here. So I've got the heat shield off the, uh, the regulator. I've got the rear cover. I've got the screws all separated. Um, you know, they just come out of the board and so forth. What you might notice also is that I've got this new blue uh, silicon mat uh, under my videos. Well, this is the first one actually. So I just picked this up off um, off one of those China websites, you know, AliExpress or Banggood or something. I'll post a link to that so you can check it out if you're interested. But for just a few dollars, I think these things are amazing because you can separate your screws. Um, you can just sort of keep yourself organized and uh, they're sort of heat proof as well. If you drop solder blobs onto them, nothing's going to happen. Uh, yeah, I just think it's a great idea. And also on the back, there's actually a big magnetic strip uh, under the back here. So it keeps things um, reasonably in place. So that's cool. All right, so I'll just finish pulling this apart and lift the board out. I'll give those plastics a wash as well because they're quite dusty. So our first job is basically to remove the entire switch mechanism. So let's have a look how that's put together. So these two large solder points there and it looks like the pins yeah so it looks like the pins are just these two points here so we need to take all four of those off um, we'll just we'll snip them flat with the flush cutters and then we'll desolder them pull the switch out uh, and we'll, we'll measure those two pins and just work out the polarity and then we'll put our we'll wire up our new switch into something like that we'll just have to run some wires to it towards the center of the board is the on position so we'll just replicate that with this switch, um, which should sit something like that. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, start by desoldering these and I'll show you what we end up with. So let's try and cut these down a little bit. Take out some of the posts and some of that solder. Okay, grab our soldering iron with a quite a large tip on it. You get better heat penetration with a large tip and really just try and remove this solder. So that should just come right out. Yep, there we go. So, you know, the broken switch, it is what it is. You could really mess about with trying to re-engineer how this works and yeah, try and repair the, the locking mechanism, but I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, I don't think it really detracts from the value of the console by replacing the switch. You know, maybe a little bit, but you know, whatever. 
So we're gonna move forward. So basically there are our power points there, which we'll clean up with isoprop in a second. Um, we're just gonna run wires down through the board, solder onto that, and basically solder onto the switch. So the way to physically attach this switch is probably just with glue, just with some super glue straight onto the board, because it's a nice bit of flat area. Uh, I think that would be actually quite fine. So that's the correct position. But we probably just need to make sure that actually sits in the case properly. So let's put put the board back in the case. You know what, it almost sits absolutely perfect. So if we put it, if we glue it basically there, it'll rock, it'll rock nicely and be quite a flush look. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think we need to modify it at all. It matches the edges of the plastic spot on. Uh, there's a half a millimeter gap underneath, so it rocks nicely and we're good to go. So it's going, it is actually going to sit up on its lip and it's going to touch there and there. So we'll put a bit of glue across, you know, the front edge and the, and this raised edge and that'll be fine. So the switch will sit on a slight angle, but it'll be, it'll be good. It won't be a problem. So that's all we're going to do. So let me just, uh, I'll clean up this board with isoprop, make it a bit cleaner. I'll, I'll run two wires down through the board, we'll solder them on, and then we'll bring them up through the holes and we'll solder them on the pins. It actually doesn't matter which way those pins go, all we're doing is joining uh, or completing the circuit there. So the polarity does not matter. This is just a two pin switch. So let's go ahead and do all that. And hopefully that's, that's all we need to do. Okay, so I've prepared two little wire conductors, nine volts, one's gonna be ground, so we'll pick that. I wasn't gonna measure it, but you know, just for the OCD kids playing along at home, let's work out which pin is which, uh, to put our multimeter across it. Yeah, so that's the correct polarity. That one's ground, that one's nine volts, you know, nine volt input. It's before the regulator. So that's gonna be our red pin towards the outside. I'll unplug that guy again. So what I've done here, uh, I haven't quite finished, I've just stripped a bit of wire and I'll just poke that through. And the aim is just to basically fold it over their back like that and solder that straight on. So, so let me just tin these up and we'll put them in place like that. Okay, so I've just put the wires just resting in place. They are a little bit long. We'll trim them back in a second, but just put a little bit of solder on them. It's quite a big hole that, so we might have to fill it a little bit more with solder. That's probably perfect. Just make sure the wire makes good contact. There we go. Yep, and that looks pretty good. Uh, so there still is a hole in that one. That one's fine. I could put more solder there. It doesn't really matter. The wire's attached nicely. So we come up on this side. We've got nice strong anchor point. We've got our two colors. So they are quite long, but you know what? In the interest of just ease of use, we can just leave them long. It doesn't really matter. So we'll go ahead and cut these to the right, you know, strip them, I should say. Uh, give them a quick tin and solder them to the switch. Sorry if you've got a bit of smoke in your eyes there. So to do things like the switch, I like to use one of these, you know, alligator clip helping hands things. Um, just keeps it off the bench. For these large pins, I also like to just add a tiny bit of flux onto the actual metal because this one's almost run out because uh, it just helps to it just helps the solder basically without putting too much heat into it. If you put too much heat into these switches, they can you can melt the internals. So I think it's better not to. 
just a small amount of solder that's all we really need and then we can put our put our wires on bit wobbly as I try to hold that at the same time but we got there okay so that's our circuit done that's the re complete repair and we'll just tuck this in somehow nothing's gonna short out it's all nice and tidy so I think we're okay to proceed like that you know if you wanted to do this a lot shorter it is probably better but in the interest of getting the glue in and that sort of stuff, you know, I'll just leave them a bit longer. So I need to probably go and wash these cases now before we finish off. Just be, you know, especially this top side because it's just full of dust and crap. Look at all that. So I'll do that. Uh, I'll come back and we'll refit. I actually am going to glue it in before the heat shield because, you know, what it's just physically awkward to align this with that shield in the in the way so we'll do it this way um, so I've just set it back in the tray um, just to get the physical position so we're gonna aim for about there obviously the the line the on position is to the right as as per the original the wires will just sit like that we'll tuck them in over there near that post that's completely fine and that would sure all work well. So the way to do this um, is probably just really quickly. So I could mark it and things, but honestly, um, I think we just get our super glue. We put a bit on, we jiggle it, and we've got about 10 seconds before this stuff sets. So the stuff I like to use for all plastic sort of gluing and repair is uh, this particular one is Sicker, uh, Sicker Bond. Um, I think it's an Australian company actually. Uh, I use this for all sorts of stuff and I use the other Sikaflex range of things for um, silicon products and stuff for around the house. So it's very strong, very good stuff. So let's aim to put just a little bit on that edge like that, a little bit on that back edge and that's going to be absolutely plenty. So we'll go ahead and put our switch in, very quickly get it aligned like that, and we'll just hold it. That's it. So there's more than enough glue to do the job there. The alignment's really good. Just hold it. We also propped the board. That's got it pretty clean, so I'm sure this will stick really well. Just put the lid back on that before it dries out. And that's it. So that's done. That's in place. So we can pull the board back out now. And yeah, we've got a nice alignment on that edge. Pretty happy with that. And that is fully functional. Okay, so now I can bolt this back together, which just adds, um, you know, heat dissipation for the regulator down there, the 7805. Um, I got another game here, but Alex Kidd, the original uh, Miracle World. So let's give that a quick shot as our final test. We'll make sure our pause button works as well. Um, one more thing to note, when you're testing your controller out, don't forget that uh, you know joystick port one is actually on the right. Uh, so I initially plugged it into the left because you know that's what it is on the master system. And I thought it didn't work. So just remember that it's on the right and you should be good to go. So we've got our power light, which is good. Everything's good. I've got the screen up here. Buttons are all working. And yep, that's all working well. I'll just see if it pauses. And yes, it does. Okay, cool. So that's great. Um, yeah, we can go ahead and button this all up now. We're all done. So that's it, you know, it's a pretty simple repair really to replace that switch i think it's well worth doing 
I like to use that type of rocker switch rather than a toggle. I just think it looks more factory and it fits quite well. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, you know, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.